And on the phone with us is Rick Dorberton. He's a custom car builder uh, from Casanova, California, New York. Excuse me, uh, Rick. And in and, and, and say California. You're from New York, so that's not going to work, is it? No. I'd rather be in California, I think. Oh, well, it depends. Uh, I understand that you and, and folks, Rick's converted a stainless steel milk tanker into an amphibious motorhome back in the 90s. And now we're 28 countries, 33,000 land miles, and 3,000 ocean miles later, he displayed the surface orbiter at Charlotte Motor Speedway's Food Lion Auto Fair, uh, sold it. And started working on new and improved transportation for land and sea. And today he's going to tell us about his new amphibious vehicle called the Hydro Car. Rick, I want to welcome you to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house. Well, thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I have in front of me, that you may not know, sir, pictures of the vehicle that you've built. Uh, I went through your site, and folks, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I have uh, photos, Rick, that start in 2007, and then 8, and then 9. Have you worked on this car for, for more than three years? No, actually, it's, I started it in 2002. So I've, uh, I've got a honeydew list that you would not believe that I've been putting <laughs> off for about eight years. Uh, I can only imagine uh, you must have some uh, uh, some real amicable people that surround you, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking at the vehicle now, and, and so give us a 30,000-foot overview of what, exactly what the hydro car is, and why'd you build such an animal? You know, the why did I build a thing, I still can't figure out, because I, 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 I guess <laughs> I thought I could do it in a few years, so I knew it was going to be eight years. Well, like everybody, you know, any of your listeners, you start a project, and you never think it's going to be as expensive or take as long as it does. But I want to try something different, and this one, the thing that sets it aside from other amphibians is it's a, uh, it has sponsons on the side, like a tunnel hull boat, which tuck up on land and they become the fenders and then uh, in water mode you drive into the water and you, the sponsors actually come down about seven and a half inches and become the uh, make it into a tunnel hull boat uh, which we were hoping would give us a little bit more speed than a conventional one well now that answers my uh, literally the first uh, picture that i have in front of me is uh in your garage or in uh, in your building area and i see that the top of the vehicle has been lifted but, of course, in the water, that's really putting the sides down rather than putting the top up. Is that not correct? You got it. Exactly right. And I see that you're using the Merlin uh, engine with, what, 750 horsepower? It's actually 762 dynoed. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the Merlin engine from uh, Bill Mitchell Racing. And uh, we hooked it up to a Cadzilla quad uh, transmission and um, through a transfer case and then an Arneson surface drive in the back and it's front wheel drive it's an aluminum Dana 60 for the front from Curry Enterprises to drive it on land we went with front wheel drive that way it's easier to launch and land you only have to get the front wheels to the ramp before you can pull yourself up. Oh that makes a lot of sense uh, I'm looking now at the at the prop and I, I don't know and, and again I don't know a lot about Marines uh, uh, I know that uh, when you own a boat, uh, there are two happy days, the first day, and the and you've heard that, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, your, the prop on your boat, tell us about that. Is that stainless steel, and, and what pitch is it? You know, um, I knew there'd be a question I couldn't answer, and that oh, might be it. It's a, it's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Rolla stainless steel prop from Switzerland, and... Down here, we put it in the water at uh, Lake Norman in North Carolina, and the first thing I did was hit the prop on the ramp, and now oh. I've got to get two of the blades uh, worked on, but it's nothing too serious. Well, but it's a, yeah, it's a, the, the propeller, I think, listed for about $6,000. Well, I, I can tell you, it's $6,000 worth of art. And, and yeah, there's no it question. It, it is really, it really. And, and uh, oh, another quick question. Speaking sure. of this uh, this picture, the, the license plate says Hydro Car. Is, is that really registered? But it's not registered to that. I have it on my van. I've got an 89 uh, Chevy Astro van that had hydrocar for about four years. I figured I'd nail down the license plate while it was available. And then, of course, I called the state and said they were damaged, so I got some brand new ones. And I uh, put one on the, on the vehicle here how, for the how, show. How's cool. Uh, on the side, uh, the pontoons, or what you call them, there's uh, some looks like some uh, – uh, no, those are taillights on the high side. Right. But what are those uh, outlets on the bottom? They're uh, troughs. Uh, on the bottom of the sponsons, there are uh, – 
doors that come down, kind of like a aircraft landing gear doors that seal off the wheel wells, but they're not completely sealed. So in the back of the wheel wells, there are troughs that lead the water out. So when you you drop in, they're open. You shut, you raise the, you drop the sponsons, you raise the axles, and then you close the doors. As soon as you start moving forward, it'll self bail out of the back of those uh, things. They have them in the front also, but they exit underneath the car. Wow, that's cool. And, and another another part of this, and folks, uh, this is a really uh, really an interesting automobile and uh, we're, we're talking with Rick Dauberton. I'm looking at another photo of, of, of solenoids there, two, four, six, eight solenoids. Uh, there must be a lot of hydraulic lines, and I'm looking at a, an Optima battery. Oh, yeah. Uh, is, is there just one battery? And I'm looking at a couple of hydraulic pumps. Uh, how much engineering? How long did it take you, and did you have the complete design not that it's the same as when you started, can't be. Mm. Uh, but did you have uh, a general set of plans before you uh, turned the torch on? Yeah, um, I guess you could say that. I, I kind of, well, you never, like you say, you never do anything. What I originally was going to do was not, I didn't have the doors on it. It was going to be a, like an LS7 engine. And then these other amphibious cars started coming out of the woodwork that are going 50 and 60 in the water. And I thought, well, I need, they're upping the ante, so I need to do it too. So I, I did a lot. Everything on it's pneumatic except for the hydraulic steering for the water because I, I figured I'd go with pneumatics. So if I sprung a leak, I'd just have an air leak instead of hydraulic fluid all over. These pumps that I'm looking at, these pumps are not hydraulic pumps. They're air pumps. Um, I'm looking at a couple of, a pair of pumps uh, that are electric pumps that uh, have stainless steel braided line going to oh, those, them. No, those are air. Those, those are for air. Yeah, via air, I believe. Via uh, air. Brand. Uh, and then I'm, there's a, there's a above them. There's a um, vacuum pump for the brakes. Let's share your website for our our listeners. Sure, it's uh, it's well, the best way is playing with cars. That's P L A Y I N G W I T H C A R S dot com. That's not fair. What? That you yeah, that you get to play with cars. I get to talk no, about them, but I'm, you get to I'm play with cars. I'm changing it to fighting with cars. <laughs> uh, an interesting, very interesting gentleman that is on the air with us now who's a custom car builder uh, from Casanova, Cal- uh, New York. I don't know why I keep saying California, uh, but New and York. Initial- when I think of cars, you, you know, uh, Rick, I think of California because that's really the, the hub of where all of the wild cars really came from. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I, I, I've got a couple of offers to go out there, but... Um Oh no! I I, 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 there's a plenty of plenty of Californians. You're, you're in New York. I, I, I think you're doing a fabulous job. Uh, question and and folks, this gentleman has built an amphibious automobile, and uh, the, the name of the car is a hydro car. And are, are you not uh, going? Are you today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and and the the uh, Food Lion Auto Fair? Yes, we're there. We've been here for a couple of days. We'll be here today and tomorrow also. Well, earlier in uh, the first hour of Bobby Likas Car Company, we had Marcus Smith on, uh, and uh, a nice gent he is, uh, and uh, shared some insight with us to the, what's going on there today. Uh, a, a quick quick question about this vehicle. I guess this is a vehicle that you built that you won't be double parking. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. Well, it double parks itself because it's wide enough to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. It does uh, have four-wheel steering, though, so parallel parking is pretty easy. Oh, it does have four-wheel. Yep. Well, the car, when the side, when the, uh, it's got, we, we call them sponson sponsons to give us some more uh, more lift. We've got some additional ones we put on the outside, and it ends up being 10 feet, 4 inches wide. Wow. That's really, really cool. I see that it has one huge carburetor, a uh, big right. dominator on it. Uh, and, uh, and we've already talked a little bit about the uh, the, the inner workings of it. Uh, how long did it take you to, to build this vehicle? Um, I logged in. Uh, I'm closing in on about 18,000 hours, which is about, that's over eight years. But last month in March, I keep a daily log. I put in 505 hours in one month, which was kind of a record, I think. I hope, anyway, <laughs> for me. And that machine, um, all you do the machine work there in-house? I did not. I've got. I did a lot of it. Um, I'll do the drawings. My wife. My wife uh, works at Carrier Corporation. She's really into the CAD computer designing and stuff. So if it's, I need something intricate, I'll say, "Honey, can you <laughs> do this for me?" And um, no, the machine work I did not do. Uh, I've got a guy that we kind of barter with on that. He's so much better than I'd ever be anyway. I, most of the stuff is 
is done in house. I mean, well, it was. Uh, it's just it's just a gorgeous vehicle, and and uh, uh, I just I applaud you for uh, for building it. I applaud your wife for the support that she's obviously given you. That you uh, I've made that obvious. Uh, one last and final question here. Sure. I, I see that that it appears to be a belt crank that works the brakes. That's a beautiful work of art. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that's one of those afterthoughts of like, oh, wait, <laughs> the radiator the, and the brakes have to go in the uh, same spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell that it was some remote location. Well, you know, the pressure point has to be here, but right. we've got to push something that's up there. Right. So you, yeah, did a, no, it, you did a great job there. Well, thanks very much.